Okay, so I will be showing you how to use a Python script to solve any system of linear equations, which can be represented as matrix, or as a matrix system, uh, AX equals B. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, go to the repository that is has been uh, written below the description here of, the, of this video. And you're going to, you may start it if you want, and so fork it if you want to collaborate with the development. Uh, nonetheless, you're going to click on the green button, and you're going to copy the address coming from that green button. What we're going to do is we're going to clone this repository, which contains our M solver, our matrix solving uh, script, which is I called an M solver. I named M solver.py. So we're going to clone it to, I'm going to clone it to my desktop. So I'm going to change the directory to desktop by writing CD desktop, which is yeah, the one. And now we're going to type, in order to clone it, I'm going to type git clone and paste the directory, directory's address, sorry, the repository's address. And just like that, uh, it, it has, we have cloned the repository to the desktop. So I'm going to open it. And I'm going to type, uh, I'm going to go inside. We're going to go inside that repository or, or folder now. And we're going to type ls that's dash l to see the contents, which are the same as, you know, as you can tell from the terminal uh, to, the, to the folder to see in a more graphic way. What we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to introduce you to this msolver.py script. And this script basically has two different modes. Modes. The first mode is uh, simple one-line terminal input, which basically uh, means that you will be able to declare the values of your A matrix and V vector in just by in just uh, a single line that can be typed on the command prompt. And the second mode is a mode, an option to use Excel files to extract your the information from your A matrix and B vector or matrix. And it's very practical. That second mode is very practical for matrices that are relatively large. And perhaps you some some of those that you, you may want to keep a record of. So by, by having files, and because they are kind of, they may be a little tedious to rewrite every time, especially if you want to write them a single line. Right, so for those you need a, for those two, you need to, turn on the boolean of the dash g booleans, dash g and dash gb, which are actually default of false. Uh, so you may need to turn, turn them on to true if you want to use the, the Excel features. Nonetheless, what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you how to gonna use this uh, example that I found on the internet with the came with the solution you can see on the last, which is the last, uh, last vector that you see written there. So. And this, and we're going to type Python solver, and now we're going to we're typing the entries of the A matrix after Python and solver.py. So the way that they should be typed are you should type them from the top left entry to the bottom right. That's how the Python program reads it, reads them. Uh, I forgot to yeah. You should always write. Uh, I mean, given that we are declaring the a matrix, I had, you had to write dash A at the beginning. And I followed, then after you write those entries, you, it follows by you um, typing dash DA, which um, stands for the dimensions of the A matrix, which are three by three. And then what I've done here is I also type dash D dash B, which is the, which will be the, the entries for the B vector, right, 983. So uh, that's how it, in, all in all, it should look. It's just a single line, like I, as I as I said before. And what it does, what the program does, is it just reshapes the A matrix given the dimensions that we've given it, and it shows them on the output terminal. You can see it there. And the solutions are on the x vector on the final on the last uh, last array or vector that you see there down there on the term on our terminal. So our solutions are two, minus one, and three. They're the same as the solutions that were found on the on that website. So what we can do now is we can extend our V vector and we can actually make it a make it a matrix because the 
the v uh, array does not necessarily have to be a vector, right? Um, as long as it falls, uh, as long as it fulfills the, those linear algebra rules. So in order for us to declare V as a matrix, we have to type dash DV to establish the dimensions, three by two matrix in this case. So as you can see now, it, we have a V vector, which is a three by two, I mean, sorry, a V matrix, which is a three by two, and the solutions are in the last uh, last output as, as it was for, for the previous case. Now, if we wanted 983, uh, written vertically, we may need to change the way that we typed our script. So they should be, we should have 9A3 overlapped by the other values. So that's what I'm doing right now, right? Because the program reads the, the entries uh, top left to bottom right. So I just redo a little bit of, we can do a little bit of rearrangement. And then we end up with a back, the V vector being 9A3 from top to bottom to 1, 3, top to bottom. So, of course, that's just like you can see, then it would be congruent with the vector that was just with the V vector that was just 93, right? So, that's very, very interesting. Yes. So, now, now we're going to go through the second mode, which is based on using Excel files uh, to declare uh, the values, the value for your A matrix and your V matrix. As I mentioned before, this is usually uh, an effective, effective mode or good, good mode to use when your uh, matrices or vectors are relatively long and hard to type in one in a one line as a one line statement. So, uh, the paths that you see there, the dash p arguments, are just the default paths, except default names for the files that the Python program is calling. So. It will, if it finds a book.xlsx, uh, it will you declare it as the A matrix, and book.book2.xlsx will be declaring it as the B, B vector or matrix, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open those books that will actually come, will actually be present in the folder uh, that we just cloned. So as I mentioned, this is usually a good approach to take uh, if you're if you have very large or significantly relatively large matrices to deal with. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily I'm just gonna create a 10 by 10 matrix with arbitrary values. So just that's so why I'm using a function, a run between function. And we're just gonna copy paste that function for 10 columns, that would be five. Now another five. Now we just copy the, the whole thing. We just paste everything as a number again. So it gets rid of that function, which may update, and we wouldn't want it to do that. So after that, we save it. So now we have established our values for our book.xlsx, which uh, is, has been defaulted as the path for the A matrix, right? So we typed Python dot m solver pi now dash g true to activate the option of calling uh, the A matrix from the Excel file. And the path dash p once again, just go back to the file. You'll see that it's it's defaulted to book.xlsx, right? Which is the same name that we, the same file name that we're currently currently using for making all these values. So it should we shouldn't actually need to declare dash p because this defaulted to the, to the same name. But nonetheless, I'm just going to do it here just for just for fun. And after that, we're gonna we can declare now our B vector. So given that it's just, uh, it would just be, if it's a vector, right? It would just be 10, 10 different entries. I'm just gonna type those entries on the terminal. It's relatively easy to do instead of opening an Excel file, right? So for, for B. So we're gonna, we're gonna just like 
type in random numbers for B. And now we hit enter. What is that's what it does, it just calls the calls the Excel file for the A matrix and then it reshapes it. Well it doesn't need to reshape it. Well it does reshape it actually. Um, and then it also shows the declaration for the B vector. And then the solutions are in the on the last vector that you see there. Right? So that is basically that that's that's that was just basically it for, for that exercise. So it's relatively simple. What we're gonna do now is what are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Yeah, I'm just getting rid of that dash p path, right? The the p argument because we don't need it. So just to show that it works without it, and it should we should get the same same exact answer as the previous command command that we've given it. All right, and once again we got rid we really didn't really need that dash p. Uh, argument because it's defaulted to the to the name of the book that we just called, right? So you can see that the default was book dot xlsx. Now for the case that we want to use a file, an Excel file for the v vector, we would have to turn on that dash gb boolean to true, and also change the path. Well, I mean the path of the b vector is uh, the default path is book two dot xlsx, so that's what the book that I'm opening right now, and the book that I will be mo the Excel file that I will be modifying for the b for the b vector or the b array, let's call it. Okay. So as you can see, we may need the minimum number of entries that we can type for this one would be ten because we are solving a 10 by 10 A matrix. So the minimum entries for B would be 10. It would be a 10, 10 entry vector. So we just go through the same process, generate number random numbers. Now we save the file. And after we save this uh, book2.xlsx file, which I already did, we just need to type turn on that boolean for dash gb which stands for the b vector uh, being obtained from excel from that excel file that we just created Ooh, i just hit enter and now it's just calling the computer just calling the excel files from excel then after that i just need to close all these empty and excel files okay, but, so th those are the basically the same values that are on the book2.xlsx files you can see and so now this one in this way we have called uh, the two different excel files and we have imported them to the program to have to perform the matrix operation right so now what if we we can always make our v array into a matrix, right? Because the V array does not necessarily have to be a vector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it, we're gonna operate, make a, solve the linear system of AX equals B with an A, uh, a matrix and a B matrix, both of which will have, will be a 10 by 10 matrices. So let's see how that plays out. I just created this file. Our B, my B is also 10 by 10. So I just, after I do that, save them, I run these statements and I hit enter. Right? So I hit enter and it's just um, once again calling these Excel files and closing them. For the B vector, you just run it. Right? And we just let the computer do the work. So you can see now that the, the V entries are the same as the Excel file and the A entries are the same as the book2.xlsx file that we wrote previously. 
it didn't change because we didn't modify book to book one or book dot xlsx right so so those are our solutions for it now this is basically it i hope you found the tutorial interesting and if you really like uh, the simplicity of the program and how it works please uh, start my i feel welcome to start my repository thank